Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to our students here online as well. Let's begin with prayer, and then we'll get into our session. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can receive direction, guidance, revelation from your word of God. And even as we study and learn from your word, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak and minister to each of our hearts, and we will learn, we will grow in the things of God. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll get into the third aspect, chapter 9. I know that uh, we didn't do the, uh, I think it was chapter 7, if I'm not wrong, chapter 8, I think, right? The restoration of the ministry of the teacher. We'll get there. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just try and finish this and we'll do the restoration of the ministry of the teacher and the restoration of the ministry of the pastor uh, together. Right? So we'll just finish uh, the third aspect. So chapter 9, uh, the pastor and Jesus as our example. Now all of us know the ministry of the pastor, right? Uh, it's, it, it's the most common, uh, you know, common aspect of the, or the uh, or in ministry when you look at it mostly people choose uh people choose or god calls people to the ministry of the pastor but what we're going to do this chapter is we're going to look at how what is the role of a pastor and how the pastoral role will affect the ministry uh, and the kingdom of god together right so let's open to matthew chapter 26 Verse 31, Matthew 26, 31. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Mm. So here we see, looking here, there are two words that came, came up. The shepherd, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of his flock. Right? Let's go. Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Hebrews 13, Hebrews verse 20. 13, verse 20. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the that the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So just keep in mind these two words. You got the aspect of the shepherd, you got the aspect of the sheep. Now we're not seeing the word pastor yet, right? First Peter chapter 2, verse 25, and then chapter 5, verse 4. First Peter, first Peter chapter 2, verse 25. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of no, your souls. Uh, this is first, first Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Is that the one? Yes. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sorry. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Again, Peter saying, you were like sheep that were going astray, but you have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. All right, five verse four. And when the chief, chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Now, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory. Now, look at this. In all of these passages, two words are common: the shepherd and the sheep. Right now, when you look at scriptures, Ephesians chapter 4 is, you know, is listed. Uh, let's go there. Ephesians 4, uh, talking about the fivefold ministry. Four verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Right. So we see the pastoral role in the fivefold ministry. But here in the New Testament, now remember that the church is not yet established, right? Uh, only in First Peter chapter two, in First Peter, when Paul is when Peter is writing, that's when the church is already established. 
and uh, and and so when when you look at Matthew and Hebrews and all of these chapters what's happening is we're getting the picture of the shepherd and the sheep now the word pastor means shepherd right so when you look at a local church the main responsibility of a pastor is to shepherd the church right so i got to look after my sheep all of them in the old testament you know when god is talking to the nation of israel he's referring to them as the shepherd and the sheep right so you're like sheep going astray yet i have come in i i am like a shepherd who will protect you so you've got that picture of god the father being the shepherd and the nation of israel being the sheep now when you go on you also get the shep the the picture of the pastor or the shepherd the chief shepherd jesus and we are a sheep right now as a shepherd what are some things that we must do right or what and okay so let's picture it this way jesus is our shepherd so what will jesus do when we are sheep right now what does jesus do in our lives that he's the shepherd of our soul right now that will just trickle down into if we are shepherds how do we look after our sheep right so let's look at a few things first one the shepherd speaks the shepherd speaks remember the scripture which says those who my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice right so jesus as a shepherd he speaks and through the work of the holy spirit he ministers to us he speaks to us now remember this the lord jesus can speak to each one of us in different ways yes he can speak to us through dreams through visions through the word he can speak to us through uh, words of knowledge words of wisdom revelation he can speak to us in our spirit a stirring within right but as a shepherd jesus speaks to us now it is our responsibility to get in tune with with the shepherd and say lord i want to hear your voice because jesus himself said my sheep will hear my voice now he's speaking allegorically right but what he means is as his children when he speaks we will hear his voice now here's the challenge there are times when we go through seasons in life and saying lord speak to me sometimes we don't get any word right lord why are you silent when things are going so bad we may question god how many of us have been that in that place right god so difficult other times the lord is going on speaking you know ministering to us that's wonderful but when it's the most difficult time in our life the most challenging time we ask questions god lord where are you why are you not speaking but that does not change the fact as shepherd as a shepherd we are his sheep we can and we have to be able to hear his voice it's a journey that we have to get into right just because jesus doesn't speak in one situation doesn't doesn't mean he's not going to speak in another situation i've heard you know sometimes people come up to me and say god has the lord has never ministered to me is that possible the lord has never spoken to me i've never got a word or a word of knowledge or a prophetic word uh, and I, when i read the bible also i've never got a direction that's not possible why because the lord jesus as our chief shepherd he will speak to us he will speak to us now the point is here now as his children as his sheep we must be sensitive enough to be able to say god block out all these other vo voices and help me to hear your voice block out all the things that is you know surrounding me all the thoughts all the uh, you know things that need to be done the work the pressures of life block out all of it so that i can hear your voice now that is our responsibility but as the chief shepherd he will speak 
I like the passage we read in Hebrews 13, 20. Right? He's our chief shepherd, having made atonement for us by, by his own blood. He's standing on behalf of us, making atonement. And he's speaking to us. So what, what is it that we can learn? Jesus, as our shepherd, he's pastoring over us. What a wonderful, uh, you know, if you think about it, imagine Jesus is shepherding over us. He's looking after us. And as a shepherd, he will speak to us. But we must hear his voice. Right? One of the best ways, I just want to add to this, one of the best ways, most confident way of knowing that God speaks is through his word. Right? Because sometimes we may have our own thinking, our own imaginations. We may feel that, you know, this is what God is telling me. Or we may sometimes sense that this is what God is speaking to me. And we may be unsure. But when we get back to the word, and he ministers through the word, that is the, that is the most confident way that the Lord Jesus can speak to us. It's the word of God. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. All the way back in, when you go to the book of Revelations, he says, I am the word. Right? He says, I am that word. So when we read the scriptures, we can expect him to speak through this. Now the problem, sometimes the mistake we make is we are reading it like a task or a duty. So we shouldn't come, you know, we shouldn't be reading it that way. Of course, we want to learn, we want to memorize verses, all of that is important. But when we read the word, we must come to a place of, Lord, I want to hear your voice, that still small voice, that even as I read, you will minister to my spirit. I can share many, many, many instances where, and the most, you know, whether it could have been one of the most painful times, difficult seasons, or times when I have to make decisions, just going back to the word, and the word has spoken very, very clear direction. Now, Jesus, as a shepherd, speaks to us. Now, how he speaks to us, it's up to him. Right? But here's the thing, he's given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. He's, the Holy Spirit can even quicken the word to us, to minister to us. Sometimes when I'm oh, weak or when I feel weary, you know, one of the verses that really encourages me, Colossians 2.15. I really love this verse. And uh, let's read that. Uh, something that really grips my heart. S Colossians 2.15, it says, having, and, Yeah, go ahead. Having discernment, principalities, and power is made a public Spect spectacle of them tram triumphing over them it triumphing over them that's it which version is that okay look at this i'll read the uh, niv version and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of of them triumphing over them by the cross you know, when the enemy comes in and the enemy is trying to discourage us, when the enemy is trying to bring us down, all our failures and weaknesses and challenges, every side the enemy is coming. This is the verse I stand by. Say, and having disarmed every principality and power of darkness, he made a public spectacle of the enemy. He triumphed over them by the cross. So this is some a verse that the Lord speaks to me. Now, the Lord may speak to you in a completely different way. Right? He may give you a verse from the Old Testament. He may give you another verse, which is just a simple verse, but encourages you. right? But you find those verses, you find those scriptures, and you hold on to those scriptures. Don't let the devil make you feel that, hey, you're all alone. Or nobody, no, God is not interested in you. You know, don't make, don't let the devil make you feel that. 
you know there's you know there's so much that's going on why would the lord jesus you know be worried about what i am doing no the holy spirit is in you is in us and you know the scriptures say very clearly my sheep hear my voice so we are his sheep we have to hear his voice go ahead uh let's speak on the mic yes Mr. When we actually walk with Lord in the journey of life, uh, as we walk, we grow stronger in the word. Yeah. So now we are in a fair position to understand the voice of the enemy, which is deception, doubt, mm -hmm. and uh, things which don't build up the body. But then we are left with two voices. One is the voice of the shepherd, mm -hmm. and the other voice is our own fleshly voice. So for every aspect of our life, when we are seeking God's guidance, sometimes uh, it is little natural that you know we get I get carried away with something that's in my mind more than the thing of you know is it God's voice though the liking will be similar but it's not the same so how do you slowly discern that this is voice of my flesh which I should not listen and the voice of the sh shepherd is different which is not pointing to the same thing yes so very good question now in these situations when you feel that this is what you want to do right and and then you, you feel that you know the the lord is ministering to you in another direction now one firstly let me just share this when the holy spirit speaks to us he he aligns himself he aligns his will to our will meaning we align sorry we align to his will right he leads us he aligns we align ourselves to his will yet the holy spirit also speaks to us through our five senses and we learned that in the Holy Spirit class, right? Uh, he, his spirit is united with our spirit as believers, and he can make us feel a certain way. Example, Nehemiah, right? Uh, and, and there's so many people on, in the scriptures. He make the Holy Spirit can make us feel in a certain way. Nehemiah felt anguish, pain when he heard about the walls. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit can make us feel or think. The Holy Spirit may say, you do this. Now, again, there is the flesh and there is our desire. There's the, uh, there's the work and the desire of the Holy Spirit. And when you feel that it's contradicting, it's going through different ways. First thing I would do is don't make any important decision at that time. Wait. Right? Wait for God's timing. Right? Now look at this. The Apostle Paul, God called him, said, you will be a light to the Gentiles. Finally, after a few days, he had to run away in the, uh, you know, and hide. And I'm sure, you know, Apostle Paul would have thought, hey, what is this? Light to the Gentiles, what am I doing here in Tarsus? Now, we don't know whether he was doing ministry there. But there came a time when God brought him to this place and started using him in the ministry so the challenge is to be patient right so when you feel that this is something not right or i feel that this is a decision that i shouldn't be taking now wait right ask god for confirmations right so for example i can say lord oh, if this is something in my heart right say god firstly you speak to me through your word bring that assurance Two, speak to me in a dream or a vision three give me a prophetic word maybe somebody should you know prophesy this over me or they, there should be a word of knowledge right uh, now these are ways right it's not like god is going to say okay i'll give you all three but you're 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 just taking time Right? And especially when it's very important decisions, right? Uh, you've got to take time. Yeah, we can ask God. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. We can ask God. Um, let me share this example. I was, when I was here in Bangalore, I was working here. Everything was going good, right? Now, suddenly in 2018, Pastor asked me, are you willing to go to Mangalore? Now, in my heart, I was ready. But I've got everyone here. I'm a Bangalorean, right? I've got my family here. 
everything is here right i've been born and brought up here this is my home now i have to go to another place, even though it's just a short distance just one night's journey but it's a new place new people no family we were just we were married with two small kids right so schooling everything had to change and so i i thought about it uh so i said god you give me a confirmation is that really you like like, like st put it in my heart i know it's not going to be easy here i was excited because i can go to mangalore build a church right but there was also my flesh telling how will you stay there no family you don't know anybody why do you want to leave here when everything's nice here so you see the the fight happening there the battle right now it's not like it's not like i didn't want to go i wanted to go it was a good opportunity but i also wanted to stay in bangalore now the, there was part of staying in bangalore was fleshly everything is here i'm here right i'm a bangalore and i want to be here i've got everyone here but i also wanted to do something good for the ministry right okay go reach out build that church really see that church grow then i thought okay what if we go to mangalore what, what kind of schools are there are there some are there good schools i don't know no the kids are there so all these thoughts started coming then i i, I said lord you minister you speak to us uh and as i kept reading the word uh, you know the same day i just felt this assurance you go i've opened the door for you and i remember even uh, you know even my wife she got a dream um and another person you know called and spoke to me and said you know this is something i see that you know god is opening a new door for you and i knew because nobody knew what was that you know what was that door that god is opening for me um uh, but was it difficult very difficult let me tell you 6 months it rains in mangalore right we had nobody it was very lonely it is very easy to get into you know some depressed state there very easy because there are no like it's not like here right it's a very different city wonderful city but it's not like bangalore right so what happened was uh, is even during the journey there were times i felt uh, should i just go back to bangalore right because the whole day it'll be raining heavy rain the whole day and we're just sitting and looking at the rain for about 5 months 5 to 6 months no ministry can't do anything much can go out few days but it's raining the whole day. heavy rains during monsoon seasons so god i want to do ministry right so you see what's happening here so the, there's the battle of the flesh and there's there's something that i want to do but four years later 2022 a i think march 2022 march or maybe a little before that uh the lord just very clearly right put it in my heart it's time for you to go back now now it's four years and i've well settled the church has grown we've come up we were 10 people when i went uh and now we were about uh, you know maybe about 85 90 people uh, that who after covid and all of those things two years of the church not functioning you know 85 90 odd people and now god is saying go back because but in my mind i felt i want to see this church come up to 200 300 people and i felt we can do it because i got used to the people i got used to the ministry i got used to everything there so man my heart i felt this god how do i uh, like you know why why do i feel this way uh and i remember praying and saying god if if somebody has to come to mangalore he or she or his family should be one they should be a worship leader because we didn't have a worship leader we should be a worship leader and somebody who can who's young a young couple who can do ministry until then i won't go i will stay here until we get somebody who's good i don't want somebody you know just coming and doing whatever and then god opened the right door and you know it just everything just came together john went worship leader young couple doing a wonderful job there i came back here now it was like 4 years over there now, in in my mind you see there are many things that i missed i missed many family get togethers i missed 
many important events, right? Um, many things I missed, right? If you see, actually, if you see 2018 to 2022, there are no pictures. There are hardly any family pictures where I am there and as kids. And my parents would come, but but in Bangalore, hardly any pictures. It took some time for my kids to know who's their cousins. Because they don't know who's their cousins. They're in Bangalore. So it took time for them. So now you think of this. <laughs> Am I satisfied? Very, very satisfied. I'm happy I went. Was it challenging? Very challenging. So this 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 balance that we have to find. The problem is if we want to always, you know. Uh, choose comfort that it may not be God's will. But I'm not saying, you know, uh, we have to be uncomfortable, then only it's God's will. No, God can put us in a place, make us comfortable, and do a good ministry as well. Right? But the point of sharing all this is because when we get into God's will, now this was an important decision. So I had to get into the word. I had to ask God, God, you speak. Right? Confirm it to me. Um, and then even, you know, surprisingly, um, there's a school here, which is a very good school. I always desire that my children should get into that school. Very difficult to get into, you know, uh, the middle uh, bilateral classes, meaning first standard, second standard. Usually people join in nursery and then they get in. But I applied in Mangalore. They called and said, you're already selected. Your son is selected. I was really surprised. I said, God, you're, you know, you're fulfilling all the desires of my heart. But something that I desired even before getting married. I said, if I, when I have children, I'll put them into this school. It was a desire I had. And now it's happened. Right? Everything was online. I didn't have to, they called up, they said, okay, uh, we have a meeting with your son before the admission. We had it on Zoom. Five minutes, they asked, okay, what is this? He said it. Okay, your admission is done. If it was not COVID, it would have been a whole different story. We see how God orchestrates things in our lives. But for that, we must be obedient and hear his voice. Right? Two, the shepherd knows. He knows what he's doing. As a shepherd, Psalms 23 says, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He, he he knows what he's doing as a shepherd. He knows where to go, when to stop, when not to stop, how to stop, where to feed you, when to feed you, what to feed you. You don't find a shepherd saying, uh, you know, uh, a shepherd won't get cactus or something which is very uh, not good for the sheep and say, eat it. No. He, the shepherd knows. And the shepherd knows the sheep. Now, for example, there are 100. What a beautiful example Jesus gave. One is a troublemaker. Every time he's running somewhere, escaping. What does the shepherd do? He leaves the 99, goes, finds that one which is always escaping. Now, there are how many of us here? How many of us are here? 9 of us. All 9 of us are different. And those online as well. All of us are different. But the Lord Jesus, as a shepherd, knows each one of you, each one of us, by name. He knows each one of us. He knows our desires. He knows our aspirations. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. He knows what we will do, what we will not do. He knows what we can achieve as his sheep. You know, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what mind has not conceived. See, we may have a picture of our life in a certain way, right? But Jesus knows us. In, he knows our potentials. He knows what we can be. The only thing is we need to trust in him. As shepherd, as a sheep, in the natural, a sheep knows the shepherd. When you see the word knows, means there's this relationship. 
if a new if a new shepherd comes and calls all the sheep they're not going to come back they're not going to come why because the sheep don't know this guy he's a new he's somebody else he may be a shepherd he may have 5000 sheep under him but these 99 or these 100 sheep will not come to him if they don't know him you get what i'm saying right now jesus as our shepherd he knows us I love what he says, you shall know the truth. In the book of Revelations, he says, I am the truth. 1 John again, he says, I'm the truth. He is the truth. They shall know him. They shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Right? So remember that we cannot hide from the shepherd. You cannot say, God. Keep things aside and say no. Anyway, God is not watching. I think one of the most powerful examples, if there's a person that I have to choose from the Old Testament, who, if somebody asked me, right, once quite a few years back, somebody asked me, if you had to choose one character from the Bible, from the Old Testament, uh, that you would want to meet, who would that be? And after not much of thinking, I, I had decided that that one person would be Joseph. Because he was a man of character. He, 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 knew, he knew that God is watching him. Potiphar's wife is saying, come. It was a time in Egypt where polygamous relationships were common. It was common during that time. He said, no. Maybe she said, nobody's watching. It's all right. Still no. It's OK. My husband won't mind. No. Nobody's there. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. No, God is watching. God knows. Points to character, right? The shepherd knows. The shepherd, thirdly, the shepherd leads us. In our walk, in, walk of life, do we need leading? Yeah. We need the leading of, the, of God. We need the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we thank God for the Holy Spirit who leads us through different seasons. He's there with us. He, he's going ahead of us. Right? I get this picture of, every time when I think about leading, I get this picture of Moses and Joshua, second in command, and they're walking, and you've got millions of people just following him, crossing the Red Sea. I can picture that, the Lord Jesus standing in front of us, and he is leading us. The problem is, Scripture say we are like sheep who go astray. Sometimes we want our own way. No, I, I want to do this. Or I want to go here. And Jesus is saying, no, just, just stay with me. You may not understand why I'm taking you this way. You may not understand what you're, right now you're seeing a desert. But on the other side, there's a there's a valley full of greenery where you can go and graze. But now you're seeing the desert, you don't want to lead, you don't want to follow me. As a shepherd, he leads us. When we read the word of God, when we pray, when we spend time in worship, he's leading us. He can tell us what to do. He's the shepherd of our soul. He can tell us, you know, this is what you should do. This is the step you take, or this is the step you don't take. Or you, or you wait, wait on me, wait for the right time. And at the right time, I will lead you. So the shepherd, as a shepherd, he leads us. Then the shepherd sacrifices for his sheep. Again, you get the picture of David. What did David do? As a shepherd, he killed the lion and the bear. You know, we, we sometimes we read the scriptures and we're very flippant about it, meaning we don't, ah, he killed the lion and the bear. No, no, no. He killed the lion and the bear. He's what, 13 years old, 14 years old? Let him even be 30 years old. Can you kill a lion and a bear? You cannot. Look at this. He's, if you look at it, David sacrificed. He could have died. Right? As a shepherd, he could have died. He didn't think about, oh, man, I have to, why are my brothers, my brothers are there, my family is there. 
for one sheep. Okay, take one sheep and goats. Okay, it's fine. Next time I'll not come in this area. No. When he stood in front of King Saul and he said, this Goliath means nothing to me. It is meaningless. I've gone face to face. I've locked eyes with a lion. I've locked eyes with a bear. Now, King Saul, you don't know what, I don't think you, sh you know what a lion looks like. It's terrifying. If you see a lion, if you see a bear, the bear also is terrifying. It's, I've killed both of them. I've put my life on the line. This guy, just give me five minutes. I'll finish him off. As a shepherd, Jesus sacrifices for his sheep. And he made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. He made the ultimate sacrifice. So now it is our turn as his sheep to sacrifice for him. And when I say sacrifice, it doesn't mean we sacrifice our life for him. No. There are things that he will ask us to either remove or stop doing in our lives, things that we really like to do. It could be a sacrifice in sleep, sacrifice in times of um, you know, friendships. It could be anything. He will ask us to sacrifice. We are to be obedient. But we understand this. The, the, she, the shepherd sacrifices for his sheep. He's willing to go through every challenge, every mountain for the sake of you and me. Right. Now, when you put all of this in the natural, these are attributes that you and I must carry as pastors. We must be able to speak into our congregation, into their lives. That's our role. Right. People will come to us and say, you know, when you get into pastoral ministry, people will come to you and say, you know, this is the problem. I'm feeling suicidal. You have to speak into their life. Now, you can't keep telling them stories. You have to give them the word. You have to give them what God thinks about you and, and something that can go into their, you speak into their lives. And as a shepherd, we must know each other. Now, remember, in a congregation, you'll have people from different spiritual levels. Many of them may have big problems. Some of them have small problems. Some of them have no problems. Now, it's easy to be with people with no problems. We enjoy that. Is everything okay? Yes, Pastor, everything is good. Good. Everything okay? No, Pastor, this is a problem. Oh, what happened? And we get to somebody else. Everything okay? No, this is the worst season of my life. This is the problems I'm facing. We must know them. We must understand them, sympathize, empathize with them. Right? Fourth, okay, next one, fifth one. The shepherd cares and protects his sheep. This is something that we must also do, right? The shepherd, as a shepherd, we care and protect for our sheep. The Lord Jesus cares for us. He protects us, right? He says, cast all your cares on me. Now, I know that is talking about troubles and our challenges. But on the other side, he cares for us. It's not like when we go astray or when we are going through troubles and difficulties and challenges. It's not like he's silent and just closing his eyes and closing his ears. No. The Lord Jesus cares for us. All through the Old Testament, we see this picture of, you know, through the book of Hosea, we see God depicting something. He's saying, you all, the nation of Israel, God tells uh, Hosea, go and marry a prostitute. It is like the as a it is a relationship between me, the God of your God, and you as a nation of Israel. You have gone away from me, you keep you know turning away from me, you're living like prostitutes, living in sin. You know, uh, I keep drawing you back, but you keep going back and falling into sin. Hosea 6:1 is beautiful. He says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has wounded us. But he will also bind us. He will also heal our wounds. Right? He cares for us. He protects us. Psalms 91 is a brilliant psalm. Right? He will set his angels in charge over us. 
A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousands at our right hand, but it shall not come near you. Right? You shall trample over the lion. You will trample over the uh, uh, lion and the cobra. The Lord Jesus cares for us. He cares for our lives. He cares. He protects us like a shepherd would protect his sheep. Remember the Old Testament, uh, that passage? He says, I have carved you, I've written you in the palm of my hand. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. These are his promises. And so as, as we are, you know, called into this pastoral ministry, we must care and protect our sheep. How do we care for our congregation? Be there for them. Right? Pray for them. Protect them. How do I protect them? Protect them from all that is happening around us. Right? I'll protect them through prayer. You're praying for your, your congregation. You say, Lord, I pray for this family. They're going through a difficult time. Or, you know, sometimes it's, it's one of the challenges that we face, especially, is parents with teens who are, uh, teens are going through so many problems and the parents are worried. My teen son, my teen daughter, they're going through these challenges. What do I do? How do I speak to them? So we can pray for them. I pray and say, God, bring your protection over them. Protection in the mind, cover their mind, cover their body. Cover them wherever they go. Cover their thoughts, their words. Like this is something I always pray. And I pray this over my children. I say, Lord, protect them. You know, they're, they're gone. Six, seven hours they're in the school. They learn. We don't know what they're learning. But Lord, you protect them. Protect their minds. What people say. Protect their mouth. What they speak. What they think. What they hear. Protect them from the evil one. Right. And that's what he does as a shepherd, the Lord Jesus. Uh, and finally, the last one, the shepherd gathers the sheep. Here, the, the picture of gathering is to nurture and to love. Right? He gathers us. Just like an eagle gathers its little ones under its nest. The Lord Jesus, as our shepherd, he gathers the sheep. He nurtures us. He cares for us. He loves us. Right? Mark 6 and verse 34. Let's read that. Mark chapter 6 and verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd so he began to teach them many things uh, so we see here he saw all of them coming and he, his heart was filled with compassion because he was like they were like sheep without a shepherd they had no idea they have the pharisees the rulers of the law they had no idea what they were doing. And these people are coming here. They had so many challenges, so many difficulties. They needed healing, healing in the body, healing in their soul. They needed something new. And Jesus is looking at them and saying, these are like sheep gone astray. They just have to bring them back. Right? So then we also see that in the Old Testament, again, we don't see the word pastor but we see the role of the shepherd. Let's read uh, Numbers 27, 15 through 23. Let's read that one passage. Numbers 27, 15 to 23. Then Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, who may go out before them and go before them, who may lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. Set him before Eliezer, the priest, and before all the congregation. Yeah, I think we'll stop there. 
I just wanted verse 18, right? So the Lord said to, sorry, verse 15, Moses said to the Lord, may the Lord, the God of the spirits of all mankind, appoint a man over this community to go lead them out and bring them in so that the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Again, remember what Moses did for 40 years before he came back? What? Right? He was looking after his father-in-law's sheep. So he's again bringing that picture. Let's appoint somebody who can look after these people. Wherever they go and come, he will be as their leader so that they will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Again, bringing that picture of the pastoral calling. Uh, same thing in Jeremiah 3.15. Let's read that. Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Yeah, then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Again, the Lord is speaking to the people of Israel. Now, just before that, before this entire thing, he says, uh, we look at how he, you know, he's, re Jeremiah is rebuking the people of Israel. He's saying, you've been unfaithful. You've been doing, you know, you have gone away from God. Then he's saying, if you return back to the Lord, and when you return back to the Lord, I will set on upon you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you and guide you. So again, we see the aspect of pastoring and shepherd and the sheep right so actually we see there are plenty of verses in the old testament which brings out this picture but these were some important points six points the shepherd speaks the shepherd knows the shepherd leads the shepherd sacrifices the shepherd cares and protects the shepherd gathers the sheep so when we are called in this pastoral calling we are to also lead with these attributes, with these qualities, right? And then we'll know that we have the heart of God. The Lord Jesus will speak and minister to us, right? All right. Any questions, any thoughts before we close? Okay. So we'll stop here. We'll get into chapter 10 next class. We'll look at the responsibilities and rewards of a pastor. We'll pick up from three episodes, the first and second Timothy, and then the epistle to Titus. And we look at how, uh, what are some of the re responsibilities and rewards in the ministry of the pastor, right? Right. Thank you, everyone. I will see you next week. Thank you. God bless.